Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking through how to handle elevator problems in physics classes. So this is appropriate for physics or AP physics or even physical science classes. Specifically, we're going to be talking about apparent weight and the force due to gravity and the normal force. Now I'm going to be showing you problems, how to address these problems, how to think through these things. But this also relates to everyday life. You've probably had this experience where you go into an elevator and let's say you're at the bottom of a building and you want to go up to, say, the third floor or something like that. And you begin the trip in the beginning before the elevator even moves. You have zero acceleration and you feel as if you weigh your normal amount. Once the elevator starts to accelerate upwards at the beginning of the elevator trip, you feel like you weigh more than you normally do. Your apparent weight is greater than your actual weight. During the middle of the trip, then, you could say that you reach a constant speed as you're going up in the elevator, and that means that you feel, then, as if you weigh your normal amount. Towards the end of the elevator trip, as you get closer to the floor that you're arriving at, the elevator starts to accelerate downwards, and so, as a result, you feel like you weigh less than you normally do. So the question is, does your weight actually change? What do you think? Well, the answer is no, your weight doesn't actually change. You don't change the amount of mass that you have during the trip, but it does turn out that your weight appears to be different at different parts of the trip. And we need to talk in a little more detail about how that all works. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so if we have a scenario like this, our first scenario, and that would be, I feel as if I weigh my normal amount. So this is either at the beginning of the trip before the elevator is moving or in the middle of the trip when the acceleration of the entire system, which would be the elevator in you, a system is just whatever we're interested in, the system's acceleration is zero. What we're going to do is use the sum of the forces strategy. I've talked about this in the past. I'm going to demonstrate it four times here. So if you haven't seen that screencast, that's okay. You'll see it worked out. But if you want more information about that, I'll put a link in the upper right right about now as well. So we can draw a free body diagram on the person. We've got two forces here, the force due to gravity, and we've got the normal force pushing up. And it turns out that the normal force is the thing that gives us our sense of weight. So the normal force is effectively causing what we would call apparent weight. So let me show you how to write this out. All right, so let's use our sum of our forces strategy and analyze a problem just like we would with any other force problem. We're going to use the sum of the forces strategy. So we write the sum of the forces in the y is equal to, and then literally I add up the forces in the y. Well, there are only two forces in the y. There's Fn plus a negative Fg. You could just write it as a negative Fg if you want, but I'm trying to follow the strategy where I'm literally adding up the forces. And the second line for the sum of the forces strategy is going to be to write the sum of the forces in that same axis is equal to mass times acceleration. And we can go ahead and set these things equal to each other. And at this point, it's appropriate to ask ourselves: is this acceleration of the y something or nothing? Is this something or nothing? And in this case, it's nothing, meaning it is zero. So we can go ahead and set these things equal to each other. We end up with Fn minus Fg is equal to zero. So therefore, Fn is equal to Fg. That's what we've proved here. And so in the case where you feel like as if you have your normal amount of weight, that would mean the system is not accelerating, and that would mean the force due to gravity that pulls you down, your actual weight, I'll label this, your actual weight is equal to the normal force, and this provides your apparent weight. And so we're used to feeling that normal force against our body and interpreting that as what our weight is. All right, let's try another example and talk through how to think about this. Okay, we're going to say in the case that the person is accelerating in the negative direction, that would mean like the elevator is starting to come to a stop as it gets closer to the top of this thing. And so I'm going to show you how to tackle this like we would any problem involving forces. You're going to draw a free body diagram first, and then you're going to use what I call the sum of the forces strategy. If you do this with pretty much every problem, then you will end up addressing the problem. And so it's just a very systematic way of tackling problems that I think makes a lot of sense and can help if people learn the system. All you do is you say the sum of the forces in the y is equal to fn plus 
minus Fg, because that is literally the sum of the forces. And the sum of the forces in the y is also equal to m times a, that is Newton's second law. In this case, this is negative. And we can now set these equal to each other. So we have Fn minus Fg is equal to mass times acceleration of the y, which I will label here as negative. If we had numbers to work with, then you could see that we would end up with a negative amount. So how could the right side be negative? Mathematically, how could we get an answer where the right side would be negative? All right, well, if you think about it, that would mean Fg, in terms of the absolute value of Fg, would be greater than the absolute value of Fn. So this is where the normal force is actually less than the gravitational force. And that would mean that we feel lighter. And so again, this normal force provides the apparent weight, and this force due to gravity is our actual weight. All right, so it's the same concept applied, so you can get the hang of how to do this example. So here's another example where you're gonna end up feeling heavier than normal, and so this would be like at the beginning of the trip as the elevator starts to go up. Again, let's use the sum of the forces strategy to analyze what's going on here. So we say sum of the forces in the Y is equal to Fn plus a negative Fg. I should start out with my free body diagram as well. So Fg over here and the normal force over here. And so you could say then the sum of the forces in the y is equal to mass times acceleration in the y. Now it's appropriate to ask yourself, is this acceleration something or nothing right here? And the answer is that is definitely something. If our acceleration in the y is positive, that's at the beginning of the trip when the elevator starts to go up. So it is some positive value. If I had numbers, we could work it out, but that would slow down the entire screencast. So let's go ahead and set this up. We'll just say Fn minus Fg equals mass times acceleration y. And you could say, well, in what case could we get a positive result? If this is a overall positive acceleration, what conditions would have to be true to make the acceleration y a positive value? Well, hopefully you can see that the magnitude of the normal force must be greater than the magnitude of the gravitational force. If that's the case, then it would be true that your acceleration of the y is going to be a positive number. All right, one last one. This is a nightmare scenario, right? And so this would be like if the cable snaps. So if the cable snaps, hopefully that never happens to anyone, but if the cable snaps, the person would feel weightless. Immediately, let's ask a question. Is the person truly weightless if they are falling? No, of course not. Weight is a force, and the earth is still pulling the person towards the earth as a field force. It's that the person feels weightless because they don't have a normal force pushing on their body, providing what feels like their apparent weight. So their apparent weight is zero. You also get this similar effect on roller coasters as well. If you're on a roller coaster and you're near the top of a loop, for instance, you might feel like you're weightless or you literally weigh less than you normally would. And that's because you're accelerating downwards, especially at the top of the loop. All right, let's analyze this really quickly. So we say the sum of the forces in the Y. Oh, let's start with our free body diagram again. It's a similar free body diagram every time. So that's why I was skipping that mentally, but I do think it's really important to draw a diagram, free body diagram every time. All right, let's take a look at this. So this is Fn plus a negative Fg, so literally the sum of the forces. And since Fg is heading in the downward direction, that's negative, this upwards is positive. Then you can continue and you say, because we already know the sum of the forces is also equal to Newton's second law. Now, in this case, the acceleration due to gravity is going to be minus g effectively. So that's what this is. So let's go ahead and set these equal to each other. And in what case could we have our acceleration of the y equal to a negative g? All right, well, let's set these together and think about what we have here. So we have m times a, which we could call negative g if we wanted to. And you could say, well, in what case would this be true? In what case could we have something like this? Well, Let's remember what our force due to gravity is. First of all, we could go ahead and write Fn 
minus our force due to gravity is mg, right? That's what the force due to gravity is, mass times 9.81 meters per second squared. And if it's in the negative direction, it's going to be considered to be a negative. So we could say, what would be the case where this mathematical statement would be true? In other words, what would Fn have to be equal to? Well, hopefully you can see that Fn would have to be equal to zero in this case to be able to make this work. But if Fn was zero, therefore, that would make us feel weightless. And of course, it would be a scary experience in an elevator. It may be less scary on a roller coaster. And if you trained for this as an astronaut, you would have this feeling as you were falling towards the Earth. In other words, if you're in orbit, you're actually falling towards the Earth and never hitting the Earth. I want you to think about that because it's true and it's interesting and we will get to that later in the course. In any case, hopefully this is helpful. If you have any comments or questions down below, please let me know and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.